In this video, we are going to talk about using the complement rule to calculate the probability of an event. All right, so the complement rule says that if I have an event E, then the probability of E is equal to one minus the probability of not E. So remember, not E is the complement, right? The event that we're calling the complement. And that event is the probability that the event E does not occur. Right, so if you're thinking about in terms of the sample space, right, then um, you have an event E, it's a subset of the sample space. The complement is everything in the sample space that's not in the event E, right? And if you recall back to when we were talking about probability weights and all those things, uh, one of the requirements was that the probability weights have to, oh, if you add them all up, right, for your, for your entire sample space, it has to come up to be equal to one, right? So that's where this one is coming from in here, right? And E is some subset of the event, and not E, the complement, is everything else, right? So th together, an event E and its complement have everything in the sample space. So when you add their probabilities together, you have to come up to get one, okay? So that means you can calculate the probability of event E by subtracting off, right, the probability of the complement from one and vice versa as well. Uh, if you just use a little algebra on this, right, uh, you can get that the probability of the complement of an event is one minus the probability of that event, okay? All right, so there's certain times where this uh, is very useful, and let's take a look at a couple of examples of that. All right, so in problem 4.88, they are talking about sales tax receipts. It says, the state of Texas maintains records pertaining to the economic development of corporations in the state. From the Economic Development Corporation report published by the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts, we obtain the following frequency distribution summarizing the sales tax receipts from the state's type 4A development corporations during one fiscal year. All right, so we have the receipts and the frequencies with which they occur. All right, and so, um, uh, what they want to know is uh, if one of the corporations is selected at random, find the probability that the receipts are at least 20,000. Okay, so probability of at least 25,000. Okay, so what we're going to have to do in this problem, right, is to add up, right, all of these frequencies. They have the frequencies here, so we are going to have to um, calculate those ourselves. And uh, this comes out to be 207, right, if you do that. So add all these together, you're going to get 207. Okay. And so then the next thing we're going to have to do is to calculate, figure out uh, all the receipts are at least uh, uh, 25,000, right? So looking at that, that is going to be that is going to be these here, right, at least $25,000, $25,000 uh, or more, okay? So what we would have to do is add up all these corresponding numbers together, right, and, and do that. But the thing is, right, is that um, we can use the complement rule to avoid having to do that, okay? Uh, the complement rule says that that this probability, right, the probability that it's at least 25,000 would be one minus the probability that it's not at least 25,000. All right, and so if the receipts are not at least 25,000, right, going back to our chart here, we can see, right, that they would have to fall into this category. So instead of having to add up all of these numbers right here, 
right? We can just use this number right here, 25 over 207, okay? Because if it's not at least 25,000, that would mean under 25,000, which would be in this range right here. And there's only one that satisfies that. So that's a lot easier to do. Now, you would still have to do the subtraction, right? Uh, by getting a common denominator. But that's going to be pretty easy since that number is 1, right? It's going to be 207 minus 207, or 207 over 207. And so um, then what you would do, right, is just to um, subtract that out. So 25 minus or 207 minus 25 is 182. Okay. All right. So you can see it's less stuff that you have to add up, and so probably less likely, too, that you'll make a mistake as well on that. All right. Next up in Part B, they want to know what's the probability that the receipts are less than 500,000? So less than 500,000. So looking at our table here, that would be less than 500,000, right? That would be all of these. All right. And so what we would have to do is to add all these numbers up, right, and put it over 207. But again, right, we can use the complement rule, right? And say that would be one minus the probability that it's not less than 500,000. Okay, and so looking at the ones that are in that case, if I, t if I tell you, hey, it's not less than 500,000, right? Then you know it's gotta be one of these two, right? So now all we have to do, right, is add these two numbers up, which is easier, right, than adding these up. So that would be 49, right, in that case. All right, so going back here, that's what we would have. And then again, we need to get a common denominator, but also pretty straightforward, right, with um, also if you're just getting a decimal answer, right, you can just punch that right in. A lot less stuff to have to punch in. So I get 207 minus 49 is 158. So that would be 158 over 207, right, on that one. Okay. All right, next example is uh, back to the gender and divorce problem. According to America's Family and Living Arrangements, published by U.S. Census Bureau, 51.5% of U.S. Adult fe adults are female, 10.4% of U.S. adults are divorced, and 6.0% of U.S. adults are divorced females. All right, and so it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected person is male? Okay, so um, on that one, I noticed the problem says nothing, right, about males at all. Right, it says uh, females, right? This percentage of U.S. adults are females. U.S. Adult, adults are divorced. Six percent of U.S. Ad adults are divorced females, right? So just if they ask this problem, right, on, on this particular one, um, you know, then you just have to go with the information that you're given. 
And so we could say that we want to calculate the probability that the person is a male, right? And so using the complement rule, that would be one minus the probability that somebody is not male, right? And, right, according to this, that would be, right, based on the information that we have to go in this problem, right, is f female, right? And we have that, the probability of female, right, it says 51.5%. So that would be 1 minus 0 0.515. All right, and subtract that out you are going to get 49.5%. Um, uh, right? On that one. Forty-eight point five. So good thing I did that. It's been a long day. Point four eight five. Okay. And so. Um, here, right, we had no choice but to use the complement rule. Uh, you could have skirted around the complement rule in the other um, example that I showed you, but really uh, not so much in this one. That's the only way you're going to get a handle on that because, again, we don't really have uh, the data uh, involved here. Okay? All right, and that is it on the complement rule.